happiness comes from subtraction now when we think of this idea of happiness we usually think of happiness in a positive sense and what i mean by that is that we think that the only way to happiness is by adding certain elements to our lives and these elements can take on or can be in the form of money it can be in the form of materialistic possessions it can be fame limelight it can be recognition it can be social circles friends etc so we think that these elements by adding these elements to our lives this is the only way that we can achieve happiness but my dear brothers and sisters what if we have been going about it all wrong you see this idea of happiness through subtraction rather than happiness through addition as i put it out it might seem counterintuitive but in the context of feelings in the context of thoughts and emotions getting rid of the ones that are hurting us could actually bring about happiness rather than adding the ones that could help us because you see it's it's difficult to feel free it's difficult to feel light with all of this baggage weighing you down and the case could be made that all of the things that you are trying to add to your life in order to make yourself happy in order to be happy will just end up making your baggage even bigger will just end up burdening you further now let's look at a few subtractions that we can look at implementing in our lives in a move to live happier and lighter with the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subtraction number 1 subtract negative information from your life now this can be in the form of social media and in today's landscape the news now before i go further and unpack this i want to establish that with regards to news that affects you it's important that you keep yourself informed and you shouldn't be ignorant in this regard you should keep yourself informed now you're in the middle of a pandemic and if there are important announcements that the health authorities of your country or area are putting out then yes you must keep yourself informed uh, with regards to the guidelines etc you must keep yourself uh, informed now that on one end and the other end of the spectrum where you have people consuming negative headline after negative he- headline now this is going to leave you far more worried far more anxious and sad now occasionally consuming the news is helpful but when you overdose and overdo it the news they these outlets they basically portray a very negative very extreme and because that's what you know sells basically you know so you have this negative extreme and biased view that you're being fed and they make it look like there's more violence more conflict and more strife than in reality and what we have to bear in mind is that most news it doesn't affect us at all now if it does affect you then yes you keep yourself informed But for example a hit and run in another town now does this affect you i mean yes it's sad that it happened but does it affect you it's happening in another town okay let's say some tragic event in another country does it affect you directly it doesn't affect us you know so as human beings we only have limited mental energy each day you really can't handle this overload of information headline after headline so when you know my dear brother my dear sister that you only have this limited stock of energy why why spend it on these negative things that you have no control over so this is a a, a powerful question that you need to ask yourself and again i want to reiterate that this is not about ignorance It's about knowing that certain things aren't worth the impact on your mental health. So you need to pick and choose. You need to know if you keep overloading and feeding yourself this huge flow of negative information, it's going to to, you know, have a very drastic impact and take a huge toll on your mental health. Now let's talk about social media. Generally on social media, what happens? People they tend to only share the best things that happen in their lives now individually there is nothing nothing wrong at all with that all of us we are on social media and we post the happiest of our moments and if you look at how social media has been structured you've got filters to make these ordinary moments look extraordinary right so everybody is posting their happiest of moments you've got filters to to 
you know, beautify and decorate these moments and you put it all out there. Now studies and research is, research is being established that so individually, these are the things that are being put up. But in terms of consumption, as people consume all of this, they start to feel unhappy with their own lives in comparison. Why? Because they're comparing their lives with the lives of others. So instead of using social media today to catch up with one another, a lot of us use it as a tool to keep up with the others, to kind of find out what the others are doing to keep up with the others. Now researchers, they basically write that on average, Facebook users, they spend more time examining the pages of others than actually adding content to their own. Ask yourself, when was the last time you posted something, you know? So rather than adding content to their own pages, people use Facebook. Not that I'm saying that you never post content, but when you compare your usage, you spend more time examining the pages of others than actually adding content to your own page. And researchers also go on to write that all these social media sites, their most frequent visitors are people who use the sites for social surveillance. And, and these so quote-unquote social investigators, they aren't really using these sites to get in touch or stay in touch with, with their friends and family. Okay, they use these sites to check up on them and to see what they're doing, where they are, at, what they're eating, where they check, where, where where they are checking in in terms of their locations and things like that. And research also goes on to state that the average person spends about two and a half hours every day checking social media. Now this can have another negative impact, okay, because now you have the link between screen time and your health. The more screen time, the more you spend time on these screens, you obviously, number one, wasting a lot of your time where you could be doing good things, okay? Positive things, impactful things. And on the, on the flip side, it's also having this very negative impact on, on your health. So this is something that we have to bear in mind and this needs to be reduced, reduced, and subtracted the negative information it needs to be subtracted from your life moving on subtraction number two subtract the bottom 20 percent from your life now you have something called the uh, pareto principle now this principle states that for many outcomes roughly 80 percent of consequences come from 20 percent of the causes other names for this principle are the 80-20 rule, you have the law of the vital few, or the principle of factor sparsity. You have all these names that are in place for this particular principle. So now based on this principle, I want you to assess what are the 20% of things that cause 80% of unhappiness in your life. And you also need to assess and ask yourself, what are the 20% of, of things that cause 80% of, of your happiness. And you need to be really ruthless here. Identify the 20% the that's actually causing 80% of your unhappiness. Okay? And eliminate. And I said be ruthless because this is your life at the end of the day. We're not negotiating anything else. This is your life that you're talking about. You're trying to achieve. You're trying to become more productive. You're trying to achieve you know, a greater, greater heights in life. So you really need to assess and scrutinize yourself uh, very diligently and carefully in this regard. Subtraction number three, subtract negative people. I posted a quote the other day on my social media. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Don't underestimate, my dear brother, my dear sister, don't underestimate the power of the company around you. If you surround yourself with good and positive people, they are going to propel you forward. On the other hand, if you surround yourself, and by the way, this is not to say that we are hinging our success or our happiness onto someone else. Now, we will discuss in just a bit that you're not supposed to be doing that. But here, your company has an influence on you. So if you hang out with the wrong type of people, they're going to drag you down. May Allah protect us. You hang out with the right type of people, they're going to propel you forward. And we even have the teachings of the Prophet 
sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to guide us in this regard. Hadith is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said. And I'm paraphrasing, the narration goes along the lines of these words. The example of a good companion who, who sits with you, okay, in comparison with a bad one. So you have a good companion, you have a bad companion. The comparison, the parable that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, puts forth is like that of the musk seller and the blacksmith. Allah Look, the good companion is like a musk seller, a perfume seller. The bad companion is like a blacksmith. It's a parable. It's a metaphor. Not that you can't have, not that you're supposed to only have friends who are perfume sellers and not have friends who are blacksmiths. Now that's obviously not what the Prophet is saying here in this hadith. It's a parable. It's a metaphor. And the Prophet goes on to say, from the first companion, the perfume seller, you would either buy musk or you would enjoy its good smell from that individual. So think of it this way. You have a good friend. Okay. Now by being in the company of that individual, you will, you will inherit. You will take on some of the good traits of that individual or at least it will rub off on you. It will rub off on you. See, even if you don't buy perfume from a perfume seller let's say you have a friend who owns a perfume store you go in there's bound to be free tester bottles you're you're definitely going to spray some on yourself and you will come out of the store sweet smelling but on the other hand if you've got bad company it's almost like going into the furnace of a blacksmith by going in there and coming out you're going to come out with your clothes at times accidentally burnt in certain places you're going to come out with the smell of suit and coal. So this is, this is the comparison given to a bad companion. If you hang out with the wrong type of people, you will eventually get your clothes burnt. You will eventually come out smelling, you know, full of soot and, 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 and coal. There's this uh, nasty smell that, uh, that comes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and may he help us to maintain uh, right and positive company. I mean, moving on to the next sub- subtraction. So I think I'm at subtraction number four now. Subtract, my dear brother, my dear sister, subtract the desire to prove yourself. Now let me establish something. There's nothing wrong with having ambitious goals. Ulubul himma, as the Prophet ﷺ, and as our deen teaches us, we're supposed to have high aspirations. We're supposed to dream big. We're supposed to have lofty intentions. Yes, there's nothing wrong with this at all. But what we're trying to establish here is that these goals, these lofty ambitions should not be pursued in order to prove to others, in order to prove something to others. And more importantly, it shouldn't be done to prove even to yourself. You see, today, ask yourself, my dear brother, my dear sister, deep down in the heart of your hearts, why are you doing this? A lot of us, we do things to prove things to others. We're doing it, you know what, I want to prove them wrong. I want to prove to so-and-so this. I want to prove to so-and-so that. Or I want to prove it to myself. And they go about doing all these things, these lofty things, scaling great heights in this pursuit of proving things to others or themselves. So they are obsessed with proving their self-worth. They are obsessed with validating their existence. They are obsessed with showing off that they are at a certain level. My dear brother, my dear sister, you need to stop trying to be perfect and you need to stop trying to prove yourself as worthy. You need to do more things for yourself, for happiness and keep more announcements to yourself. Because you have to understand that when trying to prove to yourself, you're going to be in this constant rat race where, you're, where you are chasing this, this standard of perfection. Now... <laughs> This is something that even I grapple with, where you, you're never going to be content. You're never going to be satisfied with, with what you achieve. You're not going to celebrate your successes. You're going to constantly keep grappling with yourself and beating yourself up. That, oh, you know, I should have done better. I should have done this. I should have done that. And you keep doing this to prove to yourself. If you're not proving it to others, you're doing it to prove to yourself. And you're constantly grappling with the standard of perfection. You know, I... I'm not happy, I'm not content, I'm not satisfied with what I'm doing, I'm not satisfied with my standard. So this, my dear brother, my dear sister, is going to keep you in this this negative abyss, in this negative and dark abyss. So yes, you must have this healthy balance. You have lofty goals ahead of you and you're constantly pursuing those goals, yes. But along with that, you also need to be happy. You need to be content and you need to be happy with yourself. 
You need to be able to celebrate your, your, your little and small moments of success. This leads to a life full of light and happiness. Moving on to the last subtraction for this video. Subtraction number five, subtract attachments. Now, like we said at the inception, at the beginning of the video, some of us think that we can't be happy until we have certain things, until we have this, until we have that. Okay. And we go on to attach. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about materialistic possessions here. It could be anything. Some of us think, oh, you know, if I have so-and-so, or if I have a spouse in my life, I'm going to be happy. But eventually what happens, spouse comes and this individual, yeah, there is this moment or moments of happiness, but eventually it dies down. Because this whole concept of, you know, attaching your happiness onto things, be it wealth, health, relationships, possessions, money, this just doesn't hold up under psychology. When you achieve something, you feel happy. And then what happens is you adapt to that, that, that happiness and it becomes the new normal. And then you lose that happiness and then you try to achieve something else. And this cycle, it keeps going on and on and on. And there's actually a name for it. It's called the hedonic uh, treadmill. Now, this concept, okay, it is the observed tendency of humans to quickly return to a relatively stable level of happiness despite major positive or negative events that take place in, in their lives. So basically, at the end of the day, if you can't be happy without those things, okay, then you can't be happy with them. If you can't be happy without those things, then you can't be happy with them. Now again, we're not trying to say that you should not try to achieve things in life, okay? Instead, what you need to be doing is you need to reach your goals without making your happiness depend on them. Now what I'm trying to say is that this doesn't mean that Oh, you know what, I can't, I can't aim to buy a nice house. Now, there's nothing wrong with you buying a nice house. There's nothing wrong with you driving a nice car. As long as you don't attach your happiness, you don't hinge your happiness onto those things. If you don't hinge your happiness to those things and to, to dunya in a holistic sense, because I'm just going to touch on that in just a bit, as long as you don't attach your happiness to these things, okay, it, it creates far more freedom, far more ease, and far more peace in, in your life. And once you have arrived there to that healthy place, my dear brother, my dear sister, even if you happen to lose what you have, you won't be as devastated because it was never the source of your happiness in the first place. Now, that's a very important point. And this is why you need to condition your mind. You need to work on your mind to arrive at this healthy place. I'm just going to conclude in this point that you're not even supposed to attach yourself to life. Now this is, this is the mindset of a believer. The Quran constantly reminds us of what? Death. Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall inevitably taste death. And look at the Prophet Sallallahu words. Akthiru dhikra hadim Make excessive remembrance of the terminator of pleasures or the destroyer of pleasures. Now does this mean that Muslims, believers, are basically living in doom and gloom and in this negative abyss of darkness where, you know, they're constantly thinking, you know what, I'm going to die tomorrow, so what's the point of even living? That's not the understanding here, my dear brother, my dear sister. Let me give you an example. Think about it this way. If you were given, nobody, I mean, is going to get that notice. But if, hypothetically, you were given a notice stating what? That you've got another, another one day to live. 24 hours, one more day. Now let me ask you, how do you think you would spend that one day? Would you spend it in doom and gloom? Would you spend it in negativity, just brooding away like a chicken? Or would you want to make the most out of that day? Because you know that this is your last day to live. Would you not want to make the most out of it and make it the most impactful day of your life? Yes, you would. So that is the mindset of a believer Day in and day out. Why? Because you could die the next minute. So basically what our deen teaches us is to make the most out of every second, every minute that we have. Because why? We could die the next minute. So we need to live our lives to the fullest. 
that's that's the teaching not to live a life of doom and gloom no live your life to the fullest so coming back to what i was establishing earlier on there's nothing wrong in 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 trying to get a good house or to drive a nice car no allah says wabtaghi fi ma ataka allah ad-dar al-akhirah wa la tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya that's the balance yes seek the abode of the hereafter wa la tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya and do not forget about your your share of this worldly life but the crucial point my dear brother my dear sister is do not attach your happiness to these things because these things are all temporary they're all going to fade away including your own life including your own life so subtract these attachments inshallah you will live a lighter and happier life